Give me a second. <laughs> we are muted. Yep. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to our pre-match press conference ahead of our game against Southampton. Uh, and obviously, welcome our interim head coach, Ryan Mason. We'll start with questions from broadcast. As always, please raise your hand. There's quite a few that have already been raised and we'll try to get to as many of you as possible. After that, we'll move on to the dailies briefing, which is embargoed until 10.30 tonight. As always, we ask that uh, there's no streaming of the press conference or any tweets that go out during the press conference itself. Um, we'll start with Gary Cottrell, if I can find you, Gary. Here you go. Gary, you ready? I'm good, mate. Good, man. Let's go. Uh, hello, Ryan. Welcome to the hot seat. What an interesting 24 hours. What's your take on it all? Yep, it's crazy. Um, it's football. I've, I've had it as a player. Obviously, I had the experience of having to retire in this game. Anything can happen. You just have to be prepared and, and ready for, for what football can throw at you at times. Obviously, you know this group of players, a lot of them, very well. You played with a lot of them. You share an age with, with a lot of them. Is, is that important for the rest of the season? So just to try and get a settled together dressing room? Is that a role that one of the roles that, that you can play? Yeah, I think my most important role is is to, to try and get some re results and positive results with the football club. I think it helps. I know a lot of the lads um, have relationships, good relationships, but listen, it's a really good group of guys. They're professional, they work hard. So that's all you can ask for as a coach, um, players that are willing to learn, willing to work. And of course, it, it's something to look forward to. There's been things made in recent weeks about some comments, for example, by, by Hugo, the captain, about maybe some of the players not giving their all, not not being together. Have you found anything like that around the place? No, listen, I, I don't know what went on before over there, but I, I, all I can take is the group for what they've been like in the last 24 hours. They've been fully supportive. They've come in, um, they've wanted to work, they've listened, and that's all I can ask for. So what is it that um, you want to see now, tomorrow night, and then, of course, on Sunday? Of course, tomorrow we've, we've been preparing to win a game of football. Um, that's the job of, of anyone in this position. Um, we've given the guys our idea of how we want to go about the game. They have to go, they have to compete, they have to run, they have to fight, of course. But listen, we, we'll, we'll give them a structure to, to work from, and, and hopefully that can help them have a positive result. Couple on Jose. Have you spoken to Jose at all? I, I know he's actually been seen around today. I know he, he spoke to the players yesterday, didn't he? Cleared his desk. Has he managed to speak to you at all? No, I didn't get the opportunity. Um, obviously, it all happened so fast for me in the morning yesterday. So I've not had the opportunity, but listen, he's a great manager. He has been a great manager for, for a very long time now. So I wish him all the best in the future. He's got you to a cup final. Uh, do you feel sorry for him that he's not going to be able to try and lift that trophy? Uh, listen, I don't think it, it's about the previous management um, that's gone now. I think our focus as a football club is to prepare for the game tomorrow, which we have done. And then once that's out of the way, then we can look to the next game. But the most important thing for this football club is, is to win matches. Just finally then, do you feel pressure? Do you feel proud? Do you feel happy? You feel very busy. What, what's your o o overwhelming feeling at the moment? Listen, there's many different emotions going through my body at the moment, but probably the most important one is, is pride. I've um, been associated with this club over 20 years. It's, it's a very long time of my life and I feel very proud. I feel like I have an excellent connection with the fans, um, which I feel is important. So, yeah, there's, there's a lot of pride in, in being given this opportunity to, to help this great football club. Thank you. Good luck. Cheers, Gary. OK, we're going to go to George Cummings. George from BBC. Thanks, Simon. Hello, Ryan. Um, Ryan, how's Harry Kane's fitness? Is he going to be fit for the League Cup final on Sunday? And will he be playing tomorrow? No, I'm not sure currently. He didn't train today. Um, it's, it's one of the cases of taking it day by day. We're still not sure about the weekend just yet, but... What we do know is that Harry is working extremely hard to, to get over this injury. Can you tell us what Daniel Levy said to you when he rung you up and told you he was going to be in charge? Oh, we just had, we had a very long conversation. Um, I think it was yesterday morning. 
once the news had broke, obviously I, I was in the building anyway because because I, I'd been working with the younger lads and we had a conversation. I took training and then we had another conversation after and listen, he, he asked me if I wanted it, if, if I was happy to, to to help the club, which obviously I was the the group we're happy as well, so that's the most important thing, and, and we look forward now. Have you spoken to the players already? Is, is it going to be strange for you in the sense that they used to be your teammates? I think last time you played for Tottenham against Newcastle, eight of nine of these were your teammates. Now you're going to be managing them. How are you going to handle that? Absolutely no problem. Um, they're professionals. We're we're in football. This we're in this business, and things like this happen. Um, you have to be professional. We're paid to be professional. There won't be a problem with the guys, I'm sure of that. So it's something I'm looking forward to and um, I'm excited about the game tomorrow. And just one last one from me. Have you spoken to Mauricio Pochettino? I know he had a big impact on your career. And as a former Tottenham manager, has he, has he sent you a text message? Have you spoken to him over the last 48 hours? Yes, yeah. We exchanged a couple of messages and a couple of the, the other coaching staff from his team as well. He's he's very busy. Um understandably but we've always had a great relationship and listen he loves this club as well so he wished me all the best and I'm sure we'll we'll be in contact um, in the future as well. Okay, thanks George we're going to go to Mandy now. Hi there Ryan I'm just wondering you would be the first manager under 30 to take charge of a Premier League game how excited are you about that and the prospect of having six games and a, a cup final on the horizon as well? Yeah, I'll be honest, I, I didn't know that. Um, it's not really in my thinking. The pride and the excitement comes from representing the football club, regardless of, of what age I am. Um, obviously, that's a cool thing. That's something to be very proud of. But yeah, the fact that I, I get the opportunity to help this football club in the next seven matches is, is a great honour of mine. And what do you hope you can personally bring to that role? Oh, many of things, of course. I think any any head coach will want to have an idea of how they want to play to help the guys understand, have have a structure, have a strategy of how to win games of football and how I communicate that to the boys on the training pitch and in the classroom is, is a huge part of my job. Um, the good thing is that this group, they, they want to listen, they want to learn and, and hopefully I can help them. And Spurs have dropped 20 points from winning positions. That's a league high, something I'm sure you're aware of. Do you have time to even improve on that in your time in charge, do you think? Yeah, I hope so. I'm sure there's things that I can help. Um, and my coaching team can help help the team, um, of course. Of course, obviously, it's a, it's a back end of the season, which which is obviously difficult to change some things. But what we can change is is structure and understanding of what to do in certain moments and and hopefully if they have that in their mind, then that can help the help the group in in the moment. And just finally for me, you know, you've only had a, a, a day or two before the first game and a cup final looming at the weekend. What are the challenges of that? A lack of time, um, a real lack of time, but I've been working hard, I've been watching a, a lot of a lot of stuff and I've I've tried to get the messages as clear to the lads as possible, obviously. I don't want to give them too much information because it's such a short period of time, but there's been some key messages and hopefully I can take that on board and take it into the game tomorrow evening. Okay, thanks, Mandy. We're going to go to Ian Abrahams at TalkSport. Moose, you're up. Hi, Ryan. How are you? I'm very good, thanks. How are you? I'm okay. So you've got the big job for the to the end of the season. Big question. Do you want it beyond them? Is this now a big uh, a big audition for you? No, it's probably a bit of a cliche, but I only knew I was taking training yesterday. It's, it's been the last thing on my mind. All, all my focus on at the moment is preparing for a game tomorrow. Um, and then after that, it'll be preparing for the next one and so on. So at the moment, that's the last thing on my mind. I mean, it's been a bit of a slow news week, actually. So it's it's, a, it's good to, to, to speak to you, actually. Um, thoughts on the European Super League? As a, as, as a man involved in football, not necessarily as the... Interim manager of Spurs. Yeah, as you can probably imagine, since I think maybe 10, 11 o'clock, I'm not sure what the time was yesterday, my mind has been consumed with so many other things. I can't give an honest answer if I don't actually know what consists of, of the situation. So at the moment, I'm probably not the person to ask because I don't know enough about it. I don't know hardly a thing about it to even answer that question. 
Um, Spurs fans aren't happy. In fact, Spurs fans of football in general aren't happy. This is the last question on the European Super League. Do you understand why? Because of the fact that there's not the promotion and relegation that we have in football in, in England? Like I said, I need to know all the information before I answer a question on it. Um, I don't know what fan reaction's been because my mind's been deep in a laptop or on the training pitch or, or trying to help the players in the classroom in the last 24 or so hours. So. I don't know anything about the situation for me to even comment on on fans, the football club, anything. So, sorry, I can't answer that question. That's all right. Final one then. You've got a massive game tomorrow night because I, I presume you've still got ambitions of getting in the top four. But then Sunday is, is probably the biggest game Spurs have had in over a decade, a chance to win a, a trophy. Um, I mean, it would be great if Ryan Mason could deliver that to the Tottenham fans, wouldn't it? Yeah, but I think the most important thing is the, is, is the football club. It's Tottenham Hotspur. This this isn't Ryan Mason. This is this isn't about me. My ego is all I care about is this football club, and and the fact I've been trusted with leading the team out is a great honour of mine. But Tottenham Hotspur Football Club is the most important thing in the next twenty four hours, in the next week, and until the end of the season, and and for the future. So that's the most important thing is is the football club. Okay, thanks, Moose. We're going to go to Chris Slegg. Chris. Hi, Ryan. Um, fans of Tottenham, football fans in general, are, are very unhappy about the ESL proposals. Um, what's the feeling like around the club? Do you think the owners of the club would even be aware of that kind of backlash? And if they are aware, do they care? Or are they just so far detached in this modern football world? I think, as you can probably imagine, not just me, but everyone involved in this football club in the last 24 hours, the priority has been internally what's been going on to sort everything out here. So I don't know about fan reactions. I don't know about anything. I really don't. I've not watched any news. So I can't comment. I can't answer. My focus has been on the team. Everyone involved in this football club, the focus has been Tottenham Hotspur Football Club. What's best for them? How are we going to move forward? So you're asking the wrong question to the wrong person, um, unfortunately. Well, what Tottenham and the other big six are proposing is a, is a closed shop. Do you think you'd have fallen in, in love with football as a kid if, if football was played that way? Chris, I'm sorry. I think, like Ryan has said, he has obviously made clear that he hasn't been able to take this in and appreciate you're trying to outline some of the proposals to him, but I do think he would like to read up on it himself. There's no proposals. It's, it's I know, very obvious. Fine. The main yeah, thing about... But you're, 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 outlining, you're outlining what the Super League is about, but I think mm. from Ryan's perspective, it would be fair if he actually gets the opportunity to look this up himself. And I think you can appreciate that there's a lot of opinion out there and that he's, he needs to have the opportunity to take that in himself before he can pass comment on it. But, but okay. would he would he like to see the game played that way, or is is promotion and relegation and European qualification as we know it important to you, Ryan? Do you, do you think football played the way it is is it, is important to you? I think I'll be honest. I think, like Sai said, I can't answer a question if I don't know the full details. So you, you, you're saying a couple of little points, but I can't. I'm not going to answer a question until I've sat there, I've read about it, I've learned, I've understood what the outline is, every every single detail, because that would be wrong of me to answer a question that, that I don't know anything about. OK, Chris, thank you. We're going to move on to Jonathan Veal. John. Hi, Ryan. Uh, congratulations. I'm going to get the job. Can you just sort of explain what sort of a, a fairy tale it's been for you? You know, you joined Spurs as an eight-year-old. Um, you played in the Carabao Cup final five years, six years ago, and, and now you're going to be leading the mark. Can you sort of just explain what this means to you? Yeah, I think it's it's no secret that I love this football club um, to spend 20, 20 years of my 29 years involved with this football club. Um, it's in my heart. It's in my blood. Of course it is. I've always felt a massive connection with with the fans of the club. I've, I've, I've always had a great connection with anyone who works in the club and that's important. That's important. I've always felt loved and one thing I can guarantee is that, that I'll give my all in the next seven games to prepare this this group of players to to win football matches. And the pride I feel is amazing. Um, it's one of those where I probably won't be able to take it fully in until until the season's done. But of course, at the moment, I feel immense pride. 
Cool. Uh, and you said that you're not sure whether Harry Kane's going to be fit for the next couple of games. Can you just sort of give us a, a clue of the extent of his injury? I think he was scanned at the weekend. Is the ligament damage or, or what? I think with any injury, you just take it day by day. Um, Harry is a professional; will be doing all he can, all he can to get fit as soon as possible. It's one of those. There's no time scale on it, but um, yeah, hopefully Harry won't be out for too long. Thanks, John. Okay, Jerry Cox. Hi, Ryan. Congratulations on your role. Um, can you just uh, clarify exactly what the um, coaching setup will be? Who your assistants will be, and how it will work? Yeah, I mean, at the moment, there's um, so there's people from him within the club. Chris Powell, Ledley's, Ledley's remained. Um, Nigel Gibbs as well, who's, who's been associated with the club a very long time. So that's it currently. Um, whether or not that changes over the next three days, four days, five days, I'm not sure that's something we'll have to look at. But as you can imagine, the last 24 hours has, has been crazy. Um, we felt like that was the best solution initially. We feel like that's a very good solution. And... It's working well. The response from the players has, has been very positive. So that's something we'll we'll definitely um, look at in the future. And looking at it from the outside, it seemed like some players were just being frozen out and weren't getting a fair crack of the whip. Is this a clean slate for everyone? Will Will you consider, you know, everyone for selection based on performances and in training and so on? Yeah, of course. I mean, whatever happened before, I, I wasn't involved with. I'm not too sure. I'm not too sure what happened. But all I can take is the players, how they trained yesterday, how they trained today, the fitness of the guys, the mentality, the mindset, how, how the feeling is with within the group, within the individual. And and then it's it's our job to to pick a team to to win games of football. And is is top four still still achievable, do you think? I think the most important thing for us as a group is to take take it game by game. We know in football, things can change so quickly. Um, the last 24 hours have, have showed that. But results can happen. Things can happen. The most important thing for us is, is to prepare ourselves, um, be in the right frame of mind to, to go and win football matches. And, and then, of course, we'll, we'll see where that takes us. OK, thanks, Jerry. We'll go to Ali Gold. Hey, Ryan. <clears throat> Congratulations on your new role. Um, just want to ask, obviously, seeing you kind of in the academy set up, uh, managing, I think, the UEFA Youth League uh, matches as well. Obviously, this is going to be very different for you. But in terms of any similarities, what kind of what is a, a Ryan Mason Tottenham Hotspur side going to look like? What kind of principles is it going to have? So, no, I, I'd hope to think that's what a Tottenham Hotspur side would, would historically look like. I, I want us to win games of football. I want us to be brave, to be aggressive, um, to play like. Tottenham Hotspur, obviously, there's such a short turnaround with games at the moment. Um, I think the most important thing now is to get the players in the right frame of mind, to give them some key principles of, of how we want to approach games of football. And then hopefully as that goes on, that can develop. And just one little quick one. I mean, well, obviously we asked about Harry, but any other injuries? Uh, ben Davies, Matt Doherty coming back anytime soon? Yeah, so Matt returned to the training group yesterday. Um, ben, I'm not sure how long he's got until he returns, but yeah, that's it as it stands at the moment. Thanks, Eddie. We're going to finish with Jack and Carrie Brown, so we'll start with Jack. Hi, Ryan. Um, it's obviously been a pretty difficult last few months in terms of results and performances. Is it hard for you to lift the players after that? No, I don't think so. Um, it's football. It's football. These guys are professionals. Um, they're paid to do a job. They're paid to come in, to work, to compete. And and that's that's the most important thing. Do I think it's difficult? No. You're playing for Tottenham Hotspur. We have a beautiful stadium. We have, um, we have some things to play for, some big things as well. So trying to lift the group, trying to lift any footballer for that, no, I, I don't think so at all. Obviously, it's... Um the fans weren't happy with the way things were going. How important is it to you to get the fans back on side, particularly as they're going to start coming back in? Of course, massively. The The fans are such a huge part of this football club. I think any successful football club, they feel a connection between the fans, the players and everyone. And, and that's what we want Tottenham to be like. Um, that's how I've known it as a player. That's how I, I've known it as a coach. And that's that's how I want it to be. Of course, that's... That's huge for our fans to feel like our players represent us and, and this great football club. 
Okay, Kerry, to finish from a broadcast perspective. Hello, Ryan. Go for it. Um, many congratulations. Um, I'm cast your mind back to the 2015 League Cup final. I'm walking out with uh, Hugo, with Harry. I think ben was on the bench. Could you ever imagine, fast forward six years later, you'd be the coach? No, I'll be honest, I thought I'd still be playing football. Um, I'm still, I'm probably in my prime, if I'm honest, in terms of footballing ability. But listen, football... It's a crazy, crazy sport. It's, it's bizarre. Um, I've experienced so much as a player. I've, I've had to deal with with so much. Obviously, having the serious injury that I had, fighting for my life, um, coming back, having to retire, returning to this this great football club and representing them again as a coach and learning. It's crazy. It's crazy. But at the same time, it's football. It's football. And anyone that's involved in football will understand that, will know that. You have to be prepared. There's, there's, there's no planning. There's no pathway for anything, for anyone. Um, the most important thing is, is doing the time, doing the yards, doing the work, being prepared and, and probably most of all having a love for the game. And that's something that I've always had. I, I love football, even though I'm not playing it. I love it. I love being around the place. And yeah, the fact I'm representing this football club and get the opportunity to walk us out tomorrow at our beautiful stadium is, is a great honour of mine. You've done so much for head injury charities. Looking back at that time and what you've been through to come to now, what's your message to anyone that's been through that? And in a sense, when you've gone through something as life-threatening as that, are the pressures of even being a manager at a top Premier League club like Tottenham water off a duck's back? Yeah, no, I mean, there's pressures. Of course there is. I'd be lying if I said I didn't feel it. Um, that's that's speaking completely honest, honestly. But the most important thing for for all of us is is our health. Um, yeah, I've had some difficult moments. Um, I've had such a great network of people around me. I've I've had Hull, we're a great football club. They helped me. Obviously, this football club, who's in my heart, and I feel like there's people here who who genuinely care about me as a human being and the people I've had around me have, have been the most important thing to stay positive, um, to work hard, to believe, have a good energy about you and um, and good things will happen. Okay, thanks for that, Kerry. We're going to end the broadcast part of the press conference now so that camera can come off.